Here at UW Medicine, we've been able to assemble the latest in diagnostic technology. And then we've worked hard to develop the latest in diagnostic techniques. And when you put powerful technique together with powerful technology, you've got a good combination for getting the right answer. We're all getting background radiation from Mother Nature all the time. And the amount of radiation you get from a typical CT scan is about the same as we get from background radiation every year. The standard x-ray that you get when you go to the emergency room uses very little radiation, but it is the same kind of radiation as in a CT scan. Sensitivity to radiation is quite variable depending on the tissues. Certain structures are much more sensitive to radiation than the others. The thyroid, breast, or ovary, for example, are very radiosensitive compared to the others, such as bone or muscles. So we provide thyroid shield for the patient coming to chest or neck CT scan to protect the thyroid gland from getting a radiation exposure. Nuclear medicine does involve radiation, but the way we control radiation there is by using very small doses. MRI is very different. It uses magnetic fields and radio frequency pulses, so there's no radiation involved. The amount of radiation that we use for medical purposes is very low to begin with, but we always like to be as safe as possible, so we keep the dose as low as we can. Here at UW Medicine, we've worked closely with our partners in industry to markedly lower the amount of radiation in the CT scan. Through the use of better techniques, we can get the dose down to what we call low dose, but through the use of advanced computer technology, we go to lower levels that we call ultra low dose. So using digital technology and fiber optics, we are able to reduce the scan time. For example, cervical spine MRI used to be 20 minutes in length, but now it's down to 10 minutes. Even though we reduce the amount of radiation in our typical diagnostic CT scan by up to 80%, the images come out looking better and have the same amount of diagnostic power. Right now we obtain images at at least six different places throughout UW Medicine and all those images come to one spot where the subspecialized radiologists interpret them and then consult with the referring physicians. Subspecialized radiologists receive at least two years of extra training in very focused areas of the body and then they have a vast amount of experience in what goes on in the way of disease in those areas as well as in the diagnostic imaging. Here at UW Medicine in Radiology, we put it all together. We have the latest technology, we have the best techniques, we have the subspecialized radiologists, and we get the information to your doctor quickly.